welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be going over two whole pages of hacks, tips, and tricks to be able to work with sheet metal using just basic stuff. I'm going to be using a $100 stick welder off Amazon, an angle grinder, and just basic tools that pretty much anyone has in their garage. Now we're not going to just go over this like a bullet point list. I'm going to be building something that's going to solve an organizing problem I've had in my garage for a long time, and it's probably something you could use as well. So make sure to stick around to the end of the video to see what that is. I'm usually one to get right to the point, but I thought maybe we should take a minute because I got something today in the mail. It is this silver play button for 100,000 subscribers, and you know, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed by the growth that we've seen in this channel over the past year and by everybody, all of your support and your comments and the great things that I've heard. And you know, when I hear a comment that it helped somebody with their job or it helped them to learn something that they could complete a project, they built a window frame they wanted to, whatever it is, that means more to me than any award ever could. So I'm just thankful for, for all of that support that, that you guys have given here on the channel. Let's get right into the video. Now the first thing you might need to do when you're working with sheet metal is make a nice long straight cut. Now in a sheet metal shop, this is typically done with a shear. I don't have a shear, but I typically use a computer controlled plasma cutter. But here, we're just gonna use an angle grinder. And in order to get a nice straight cut, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of angle iron here and clamp it to this material, and that's gonna give me a guide. See, in this big, long, tall piece, since cutoff wheels aren't made to grind sideways, I can just rest it there. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure sideways, just resting it along there as I cut my way all the way along this piece, right? And as I do so, I wanna make sure I have a nice firm grip on the tool, but a light touch on the material so that I can keep everything in good control. The next thing you usually have to do with sheet metal is to create a flat pattern, and there'll be bends and welds as part of the process. That'll come later. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out, and one thing I really love on this speed square is it has these notches that you can put a marker or a pen or a scribe right in and just slide it along to make a line right where you need it. Now I usually mark all the way across at the critical dimensions that I need, and uh, those can make up my cut lines. But there's usually portions of these lines that I don't wanna cut, so to keep from getting confused, I just erase those using a rag with some acetone on, wipes right off, clean, and I'm good to go. Now while I'm doing this layout, I'm also gonna put on some bend lines. And to indicate that, I like to use different colors of markers. I'm gonna be using a blue marker here, and it's hard on the camera to see the difference, but in reality, I can see clearly between the two different colors, and that helps me to know where I need to cut, and then later, where I'm gonna need to make a bend. Now you can see on this pattern here, there are two of the bend lines that come together at a 90 degree angle, right? So I have the bottom corner, and whenever you build anything like a pan or a box or a tank or anything like that, you're gonna have that situation. And so when you bend those together, if you just leave the sheet metal there, it actually will bulge out on the corners and you're not gonna be able to get a good tight fit. So you need what's called relief there at the corners to be able to bend that up. Now the easiest way to do that when you're cutting things by hand is to drill a hole right there at the corner to give some relief. And you'll see more as we get into this project what I'm talking about. Now the first step to drilling this hole in the sheet metal is to take a center punch and make a little divot at each of these positions so that I'll be able to get my hole right in the right spot without having the drill bit wander around. Now the size of hole is a quarter inch, which is just over six millimeters, and that's larger than it really needs to be here, but that gives me a little bit of wiggle room in case my position is off just a bit. Now another great trick when you're working with sheet metal is to put a piece of wood underneath it to drill right through into, and that'll support clear up right next to the hole where you're drilling. And if you're drilling really thin metal, you could actually make a sandwich with two pieces of wood and the sheet metal in between them going through. But it just provides a little more support than if it were hanging off the edge of a table or going through a larger hole where it might push and bend the material a little bit. Now that those holes are drilled to give me some relief down at the bottom corners, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the rest of this flat pattern just using that angle grinder and the guide like I did before. So now I've created this flat pattern and I need to bend it. Now in a sheet metal shop, this would be done with a brake, which is a device 
that actually holds and supports the metal and will bend it right up. But if you want to do it without using a brake and you don't need full strength in that joint, which a lot of times you really don't need to have full strength or have it seal, you can use a little trick that I'll often use when I design parts for laser or plasma cutting. You can make little slots in it uh, periodically throughout. So I'm going to mark out some evenly spaced areas and then use this grinder to plunge down through, again, using a firm grip on the tool, but a light touch on the material. And as I plunge through, that's gonna create a slot and weaken the material in that area. So I'll be able to make the bend much easier. So now you can see there's slots all the way along here where I'm gonna bend this into shape and this is really starting to take the form that I want it to. Now as I bent this, I realized that the slots probably could have been a little bit longer because it was still pretty rigid and I had to use a couple pair of pliers and clamp things down my table a little bit to be able to make the bends, but it's still bent in the right spot and formed together very much like I wanted it to. It just took a little bit of manipulation and I had to finish the job using a rubber mallet to get everything formed into shape. All right, now that this thing is bent into the shape that I want, I need to weld up these corners. And I would much prefer using MIG welding or TIG welding to do this job. And that's what I'd use on a daily basis because I have nice machines here like this Invertig 221 and the Pro Pulse that would really do a great job here. But I'm going to do it with this Deco Pro stick weld. It was just over $100 on Amazon so that you can see that you can do this with about anything. And I'm going to show you some tricks to make it a little bit easier. Now, as far as electrodes go, I'm using a 6013 electrode. I don't usually care much for 6013s. I don't use them too often, but when it comes to welding an outside corner joint on sheet metal, they can be just the ticket. Now that 332 inch size or 2.4 millimeters is going to work pretty well for me, but if you wanted to make it even a little bit easier, you could get some 1 16th or 1.6 millimeter uh, electrodes to use. Now another little trick to make this easier is you can switch these cables and so I'm actually going to be connecting my electrode to the negative side instead of the positive and that will cause it to penetrate a little bit less than it otherwise would have. I made a whole video about how that works if you're curious about it but that's a trick that you can use. And then I'm gonna dial in the settings on my machine. I'm starting out with a setting of 55 amps, but I know this machine is notoriously off on its amperage readout, especially when you're welding using 120 volts, which that's what I'm using today. So I'd recommend that everybody practices or tests their settings before pretty much any weld that you do on your project. It saves you a ton of time. You can correct errors early on. And I'm just gonna show you where I get the material that I use to practice and warm up as well as to make these videos. I get it from Weld Metals Online. I've been a customer of theirs for a while and almost all of the welds that you've seen on my videos for several months have been made using their products. They ship out quickly and I've been able to work out a deal with them where Tim Weld's viewers can actually get 10% off. So check out that link down in the description below if you want a good place to get some weld practice material. So I'm running this test weld here and as I work my way along, I started off with 55 amp setting. I can see that it's running a little bit hot and so I'm gonna just bump it down about eight amps, see how that works and that's working out pretty well. So I think I'm ready to go. Now I did this just normally and so I think that I could go ahead and just run right on this corner, but I'm gonna show you another trick that you can use. I'm gonna do this just as some insurance because it's pretty easy to burn through when you're stick welding on sheet metal. So I'm gonna take this aluminum bar and I use these as chill bars for TIG welding sometimes, uh, especially with stainless steel where you wanna get a lot of heat out, but you can use it for stick welding. This trick works there too. I just clamp it there in the corner and the aluminum conducts heat so quickly that if your arc or weld pool bumps down through there into it, it's not gonna melt that aluminum, it's just gonna conduct the heat away and that's gonna help you out to keep you from burning through. So I'll go ahead and weld each of these corners up. As I weld, I'm having to move along at a pretty good clip just to keep everything together, but it's actually going pretty nicely. And as we take a look underneath the slag, you know, the weld doesn't look too bad for a 6013 weld on the corner of some sheet metal using just about the cheapest welding machine that you can pick up off Amazon. So, you know, it shows what's possible, but you know, I'm gonna still clean it up with a little bit with the grinder. You know what they say, grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't. And then I'll go ahead and shoot a little bit of black on here 
and this is going to be ready to go. Now I thought it would be interesting since we use these basic tools and I need two of these products that we're making here today. I thought I'd just show you really fast how I would do it if I was building this for myself or for a customer with some of the more modern tools that I have today. So I've drawn this part up and created a tool path for my CNC plasma table and it'll be cut out here in a matter of just a couple of minutes and I'll be ready to proceed with the next part of my project. Huge time savings there. Now if you want to do something like this and you don't have a plasma cutting table, you can use a local supplier or there's mail order suppliers. One I've used a lot is Send, Cut, Send. They're not a sponsor, but I've been pretty happy with their service. And so you can do things like that to be able to get cut out patterns. Now that it's all cut out, I've lengthened those slots so it'll be a little bit easier to bend and I'm able to do so just by hand. I'm going to put on some gloves here just to keep my hands in good condition. Anyway, as I bend these up, everything's fitting together pretty nicely. Now instead of using that cheap stick welder, I'm going to move over and use the HDP Invertig 221. And I've got this thing set right around 60 amps and I'm controlling it with the foot pedal here. And as I weld up this corner, you might be able to notice just a few little fireworks or, or some things popping out of the weld. And what that is, is it's an indication that when I was grinding this, I didn't clean enough of that layer off uh, from the plasma cutting. And so there's a little bit of contamination, but this is a real world video. So we're gonna roll with it. And at the end of the day, I got a good enough result. So this turned out pretty well. And you can see how the two products look pretty close to one another and now my garage is just a little bit more neat and tidy. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today. If there's anything that you learned or you liked this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.